Hey pilots, thank you for joining me on another gun re review video. I know it's been a while since you guys have seen um, the last one. This kit has taken me a very long time to do and it's been a lot of work, but I really think it's paid off. Um, and this kit is the high grade Universal Century P Bondi kit, the Toads Ritter. Um, this kit really wasn't that bad to build in general. Um, in terms of actually like cutting it and handling the marks and all that. There's a few troublesome areas. Um, really has to do with the incoms specifically. Um, there's a lot of seam lines on the, or there was a lot of seam lines, but also the numb marks were not ideal. Um, let's see here. Maybe I'll be able to kind of get you guys to see where those numb marks are. I kind of took care of them pretty well. Um, but the problem with this kit is really just with these incomes and the fact that there is a seam line all around the center of this part in particular. And there's six of them. So you guys can imagine it's taking me a very long time to deal with them. I'm not very happy with the way that these were designed. I don't know... I don't know who at Bondi designed the injection molding for this because honestly, a lot of the other places are pretty good to go. Um, there were a couple places that had seam lines that were like kind of apparent. Most of them were on the frame though, so not like a huge deal. And others were kind of just amongst the beam savers and all, and some of the weapon parts and all that. But really, the weapons themselves weren't that bad, and neither was the shield. Um, but these funnels were really, really bad, and they are probably my biggest con about the kit. Um, I keep calling them funnels, the incoms, but you guys know what I mean. Um, but everything else was pretty good. I didn't really have any problems with it. Um, for the assembly and putting the kit together, um, I did notice that there's a little bit of some wiggle room with some of the arms on the backpack in particular the ones that are actually holding the income holder or wing or whatever you want to designate this it's really really small and it uses a poly cap in there and it really doesn't seem to hold the weight unless you have at the right angle of the wings that well um i mean you could put some cement on that and make it work that way um, I'm sure you can mod it because there's some room in the backpack so you can kind of elongate the peg and it should work that way. Um, but yeah, the kit is very back heavy too. Um, so you'll definitely need an action base if you want to display this kit in all of its glory and some type of dynamic pose or even just to stand upright. You're going to probably need an action base of some sort. I know that's not what people want to hear, um, but it's just that kind of kit. It's got a lot of accessories on the backpack. Um, and it's good, just going to be a weight factor. Is it, That's it. Um, for color separation, um, I'm not too... Like, on the actual kit, the color separation is fine. Like, I think this kit as a whole looks really good right out of the box. There's still enough color separation that it's not, like, one mono color, like... Some of the other kits that are coming out recently from P Bondi, like the White Rider, where there's like 50,000 correction stickers. Otherwise, you literally have a Gundam that is entirely one color and a little splash of yellow. So this definitely looks fine out of the box. But as always, you guys know that my biggest gripe is color correction stickers. Now, most of these have to do with, with, ven with uh, vents and the Hades system, and they're offering those options that way. I still don't think that's an excuse, but that's kind of understandable. But all of these color correction stickers of white, of the red for the shield, um, there's a lot of color correction stickers and all that, and I'm not impressed at all. Um, I mean, it's a high grade, so it's understandable. You're gonna you're gonna not have the most optimal, uh. Color separation for a high grade, but when you have a really large sheet of color correction stickers, I tend to be not as motivated to like support P Bondi. I'm gonna be honest, but 
all in all, it's turning out okay, and it seems like it's it's fairly fine out of the box, so I'm not really that upset about it. Um, now, if you guys will stay with me for a little bit, I'm going to transition cameras, and we'll kind of get into the articulation of some of the, uh, some of the meat and potatoes of the kit, and the things that you guys want to know, like, how can I pose it, um, what are some of the things that I'm going to do with the kit, um, what are some really cool features of the kit. So, let's get to that. All right, and we're back. So let's get into the articulation of the kit. Um, for it being a larger kit, I am very impressed by the articulation. I'm going to be straight up. Um, the arms have a lot of articulation, so it is a ball and socket joint within the shoulder there. You can kind of get a good look at that. Um, it does have its normal rotation. It also has a, a locking mechanism where... Um, where you actually insert the arm and then have to rotate it in order to move it. Um, it does have a double joint or uh, two joints in the arm to get really good arm articulation out of it. Um, the hands are on a ball and socket, so it's kind of like the normal high grade type of arm or uh, hand and arm. Uh, the sub arms themselves are kind of okay. Um, this does pop out though, so you get more kind of rotation. Um, and this part right in here does rotate all the way around. Um, so you can kind of get that. The actual arm itself, um, like this part of the arm, does not rotate within itself. So you have to rotate about this axis. And fold it back in there nicely. Um, the head is on a normal ball and socket. So you're kind of just going to get the normal high grade range of motion on the head. You can kind of back it out a little bit so you get a little more articulation, um, a little more view, but I'm not really too concerned about that. The head looks badass anyway. This kit it looks so good. Straight up. <laughs> this kit is so sick. Um, the leg articulation is really, really good as well. Um, it does have to the point where you can basically, yeah, where you can definitely turn it. It's got a double joint in there. Um, it's not too hard to do. You can also kind of raise a kit a lot. The uh, leg has a really good, has a really good like linking system in here. It's almost like a 30 minute missions uh, peg system where you can get a really good rotation like that. So you can kind of see that like you got the ball and socket joint. So it's kind of like some of the other high grade kits like the, uh, the uh, Jesta and and uh, Jigen, where they, they have their own method with usually a poly cap. This is all one solid plastic piece, which is really, really nice. Um, the, the waist skirts do lift up. I did separate them so they articulate separately. Uh, you will have to do that yourself if you build the kit. Um, but the coolest part, I think, about this kit when it comes to the articulation and stuff that it has that other kits don't is that the rear skirt, if you cut it properly, so there, there's actually a joining piece in here. And then it's joined up here where waist parts usually are, where it's usually the front skirt. Um, you will have to separate and sand the hell out of this or file it, the glass file. Um, I personally did use, um, I think I used pretty much the glass file all the way to that, but I did use a Tamiya hobby saw to saw it in half. And then I just filed it down with a glass file to make it work properly. Also, look at that detail in there. That's also a really cool part about this kit. There's a lot of really good detail. Um, but yeah, if you separate that, then even the, the rear skirts articulate separately, which is something I've never seen in a high-grade kit. I mean, hell, sometimes it's hard to get that in a master-grade kit, depending on which one you're getting, and, and the age of it. So, um, yeah, that's really sick. Um, the feet articulate pretty decently. It's on a ball of sock and joint. For the foot, and it does rotate about a poly cap in there. I think you guys will be able to see it from that angle. Um, and then, of course, this kicks out so you get better foot articulation. So you can kind of get a nice little kick going. And then you're just eventually going to run into interference with the ankle piece in the front. But basically, you can get something like that going. Which again, for a really bulky kit, this thing is sick. Um, 
And in terms of gimmicks, you guys did see that there's subarms in the shoulder. So this one has a subarm, this one has a subarm. Um, these thrusters on the legs do kind of kick out a little bit to give some articulation in them. I think this one's already kicked out. Yeah, this one's already kicked out. Or it goes in. I think that's both for articulation, but also for, I think, like a flight, or not like a flight mode, but like almost like a thrust or an improved mobility mode. Um, just to kind of give that look of it. Kind of like how like the Sinanji and some of the other kits have like thrusters that actually kick out. Um, or the uh, the high grade uh, grandpa, the origin version. Okay, guy. There we go. It's a little stiff, but it's 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 actually kind of nice that it's actually like stiff. So, yep. So you can kind of angle it like that. It's not much articulation, but it just kind of gives that look of hey, you're now in like thruster mode and high mobility and really trying to move around in space and all that happy, happy gun stuff. Um. All right. So other articulate or other gimmicks are, of course, you have the incoms. They all kind of pop out of here separately there is a wire that there's two really long wires so you can basically actually cut them to however you want the length to be you can have it where you have one really long one with it coming out or you have a bunch of really short separate ones or however you want to cut your wire you can always obviously get more from third-party sites um and you can actually just use these as incomes right off the of here or again however you want the pick points to be um, these arms do come, or the arms for the wings, or whatever you want to call the uh, mechanism that's on here, does come up and down like an arm, and this does sway about an axis, um, which is really nice. So you can get some really cool poses out of this, I think, just from that. Um, here you have the hyper beam savers that come out of out of here, um, and usually are used by the sub arms. I think they can only be used by the sub arms for this kit um, because they're too big for the actual hands to grasp. Thank God I did not make that go flying. So yeah. Um I don't think I'm gonna wind up using these in the final build, and I'll get to that later. I have a pretty cool plane in place. Um and it also comes with two fuel tanks as well for the backpack. The backpack's got a lot going on, which is really cool. You got the thrusters up here and the thruster down here. Um this really gives me like a it would be definitely like it would still be high mobility, even though it is like a larger uh I guess I almost want to say Gundam. I guess mobile suit is probably a more accurate term. Um the shield that it comes with is pretty simple. It's two pieces and then the uh peg system into a poly cap to be attached to the arm here. So something like this. I don't think I'm gonna be able to get a good angle. Oh, actually. Okay. Yeah, so something like that. On the arm, pretty easy to attach and detach. Um, the weapons is a standard weapon. It'll just you know you pop off the uh, the uh, like flat part of your hand or flat part of the hand of the kit, and then you put the weapon in. Um, this is a hyper hyper knuckle buster, I believe is the name of the weapon, which is a complete mouthful to say, especially for me. Um. And it's a pretty solid weapon. I just don't like it for this kit because it really makes it hard for you to be able to bend. You can't really bend the arm at all if it's using it. So I'm already, I already know what I'm going to replace it with. And with the help of, of Charles, a.k.a. Shars, a.k.a. the owner of GSN, um, who actually wound up giving me this kit because I won it in a lottery. And... Uh, he had to live vicariously through me because this was his his kit first type of deal. Um, I approached him and asked him, hey, what would you want to do for a weapon? And he said, why not give it a Gatling gun? So I do have a big Gatling uh, or the giant Gatling kit from Gundam Build Fighters. And that's probably what I'm going to wind up going with um, for at least a weapon on this side. Um, it does have the beam sabers here in the wrist. Um, I'm going to try messing with it because you could definitely, especially if I give it some cool expressive hands too, you can definitely have the beam saber come out of there, which would be really sick. Like give it like almost an Assassin's Creed vibe. So I might even shorten it too. Like 
kind of like here or something like that and let's make it like a beam dagger but yeah this has got a lot of cool like yet simplistic features to it this thing is almost as large as a, as a master grade too i know it's kind of hard to tell in the video and the grid but i mean look at that it basically i can't have it on screen fully like that like i have to turn it like this and these are all quarter inch squares right well, these are all quarter inch squares no, they're not. They're all one inch square. So you kind of get an idea of how large this kit is. It's really large. Maybe this is centimeters. I don't know. I'm, I'll have to go look. There's no way this is centimeters. There's no way it's inches either. That's probably about... Alright, anyway. It's probably centimeters. Um, But what I'm going to wind up doing... It is centimeters, 100%. What I'm going to wind up doing with this is probably giving it a couple other weapons in addition to the Gatling. Um, I don't know if I want to keep the shield yet or not. I'm kind of split on that. Um, I really want to do that, but we'll see. Um, but let's switch back to the main camera and I can kind of go over what I want to do with this kit. So don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Okay, and we're back. So let's get into kind of my plans for the kit here. Um, for a paint scheme, I'm probably really not deviating too much off this because I like the way it looks. If anything, I'm going to kind of capitalize on the Death Knight color scheme and just color it however I want. Because again, this is or this is going to be part of the heavy team, so it doesn't really matter how I paint it. Because it's not going for a stealth vibe. It's not going for like a straight up like military like olive drab or desert tan look. It's going for whatever look it feels like it wants have so i might do that with some purples some black some deep blues or some light blues even um and maybe i'll keep this light blue and make this part and make the dark blue like a black almost and then go in here and do some like nice dark purples or something like that um not sure i haven't like thought of like a complete color scheme but i think it'd be really cool to kind of capitalize on death knight and to me like a black and like nice like a nice neutral purple um, would look really good together and then maybe like the red visor or even the blue visor would probably look really good with that scheme so um we'll see what to do with that um i would probably need a third color in there somehow or like somewhere but i can always use my apps for that so i probably will um what else so like i said it is part of the heavy team um i think that kind of goes without saying this thing is Pretty close to being loaded with weapons it's not quite as good as the silver bullet is in terms of coming with them but it's still pretty large and in charge <laughs> but uh yeah i think that's what i'm going to wind up doing with this i might even give it i honestly might even give it like a, a large melee weapon and the minigun um just to kind of keep that theme of the the night because I think that'd be really cool if this was, like, the one heavy unit that had a really large, like, melee weapon in case it needed it. Um, now, really getting down to customization, I'm thinking about kind of swapping some of the joint systems on the backpack. Like, giving... I want to remove the uh, hyper beam savers, I think is what they're called. The hyper beam savers um, off the kit entirely. So this entire assembly. And either, like cut and splice um, the ball joint here with this or be able to somehow use a 30 minute missions like interface to see if there is a ball joint that, that comes with that that will fit into here and have the wings move up to here where these were and kind of just get that situated however I want to do that and um, put sub arms in here where the pegs were for uh like weapon holders. I think I want to keep the fuel pods here. Um, they're pretty easy to work with. I mean, I could take them out because it is more of a, well, no, it is a ball, ball and joint and socket system. So probably we'll keep the fuel tanks here. And I do like them. So I'm probably just going to leave them there. And then, like I said, I'll put like a sub arm assembly here for like a weapon and for there for some type of weapon, like a Gatling gun. And these will be up high. Um, I might even have to actually swap which one is on which side, depending. So I'll have to get to that when I get to that. But yeah, I want to kind of do it where these will wind up being like actual wings once they're in whatever spot they're in. 
like either something like that or or they're going to have to be on the other side and kind of like get themselves situated so it makes sense but um yeah i'm thinking about doing it that way um because I don't think having so arms up here is going to be good because it's going to get in the way of everything. Like, even if it goes over, it's going to, like, really get in the way of things. And I don't think I want to do that. And that way, if these wings are up here, I can probably hook something up that, or, like, hook something up to either the wings or maybe I can holster something. Or like have a weapon small enough so that the cell arms actually have like another weapon to use besides hyper beam sabers at our range. Because that's why I don't want to use hyper beam sabers. I almost want this to have like two small like some machine guns. Like almost from uh, the, the IBO option set one. Like those small machine guns. I almost want to like have something like that to be able to pull from. And I don't know where I would place it. Unless I racked it on like one of these wings or something once I move everything. So we will see. Um yeah, I think that's pretty much it for those. And then for the weapons, like I said, the Gatling and probably some other type of heavy weapon or almost like a normal rifle like the hyper knuckle buster, but something a little something where I can actually bend the arms and use it. Like get the most out of the articulation of the kit. Um Yeah, that's really all I have on this kit, guys. Um, I hope that this review really helped. I think this is definitely a worth P Bondi kit. I just think it definitely exposes some of the flaws in some of the injection molding processes that they have, or or their or I should say their injection molding planning processes. Um, yeah, I mean, and this kit. This kit's also a beast. I will say that much. This kit is a beast. It will take you a while to complete it, but it is very, very, very much worth the effort. Make sure you guys sand stuff. Make sure you guys take that time, get rid of the seam lines. Cause I mean, just having this like this without having any stickers or panel panel lining on it yet, man, it is freaking impressive. It is a really awesome kit. Um, I know I say that about like every high grade, but I really feel like I've been building a lot of really, really solid high grades that I've had a really fun time with. I mean, this took me almost, I mean, I think my last, oh no, I recorded the initial thoughts for this a month ago from this date of recording. This is, this is now April 6th because tomorrow Gundam Evolutions comes out. I know you guys are probably excited for that. I hope you are. I'm really, really excited for that game. Um, and I'm going to be playing that on my Twitch channel. I'm not going to advertise that here. Because I'll probably advertise it other elsewhere. Um, but yeah, this is the 7th. I recorded the initial thoughts for this kit on the 6th of March. So, yeah. It's been a minute. Um, I've been busy and all that stuff too. But I mean, even when I was sitting down working on this kit, it was hours and hours and hours for sections of this kit. Just to make sure everything looked really, really good. Um, but I highly recommend this kit. Um, I was really weird about it. Because I wasn't a fan of the weapons that it came with. But, I mean, literally look at it. Like, it's a really good Gundam by itself. You can always change weapons and it's really easy. I have so many leftover weapons anyway. So, I'll try and do something cool with it. And once I do, you guys will know. And without further ado, guys... Thank you for stopping by the hangar. I appreciate you. And as always, sorty out. Hobby on. Hey pilots, did you like that kit that you just saw in this video? Are you thinking, hmm, maybe I should get that for myself? Well, then look no further than the Gundam Shoppers Network. At the Gundam Shoppers Network, you can find kits from 1144, the perfect grade scale, and not only that, they also have other model kits that will suit your fancy no matter what your hobbying style is. They have Pokemon kits, they have 30 minute mission kits, they have kits left and right. And not only that, they also have a system in place where if they don't have the kit, they can direct you to a vendor that does. There is a community resources tab.
that has Gundam tutorials, Gundam tips and tricks, and preferred U.S. and international retailers that have been thoroughly vetted through as to ensure that they are a legitimate, uh, legitimate vendor as well as a trusted vendor. Now, if you guys are looking to get a jump start on some of the other purchasers of these kits, then I highly recommend joining the GSN Discord. Um, they have that link on their Facebook page. If you have a Facebook, just search up the Gundam Shoppers Network and it'll take you to either their personal page or their own group. And there you have it. You'll be sorted for all your hobbies to come.